Judge, motion to dismiss these cases. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 craziest legal defenses. He's the Texas teenager who killed four pedestrians while driving drunk and pled, I'm not kidding about this, a condition called affluenza. For this list, we're looking at the most ridiculous defenses ever attempted in a court of law. These defenses didn't have to work in order to make our list, but you may be surprised to hear just how many did. There is no such thing as UFOs. Can we tell you why? Because they're not unidentified, they're identified. Number 10, hypnotized by the ghetto boys. Good music can be moving, and amazing lyrics can be incredibly touching. Sometimes music can just speak to a person. What it cannot do, however, is hypnotize that person into committing murder. At least that's what a judge determined in 1991 after 16-year-old Christopher Martinez and his lawyer Camilla Haviland argued that Martinez was manipulated by music by the Ghetto Boys. I was a curious child. I used to hang out by the ballroom and study the gangster style. According to Haviland, Martinez was temporarily hypnotized by intense rap music after a party and was lulled into murdering 28-year-old Bruce Romans. Martinez eventually snapped out of his trance and changed his plea to guilty. Number 9. Between Two Wives How do you know when it's time for another wife? Actually, I don't know. My job is to be prepared for that eventuality. In 2008, Mohammed Anwar gave Love Torn a new meaning. Caught for speeding 64 miles per hour in a 30 mile per hour zone in Glasgow, Scotland, Anwar was at risk of his license being revoked. So I sped, I followed too closely, I ran a stop sign, I almost hit a Chevy, I sped some more, I failed to yield at a crosswalk, I changed lanes in the intersection, I changed lanes without signaling while running a red light and speeding! Anwar avoided losing his license when he explained that he needed it to fulfill his matrimonial duties. But most of all, I remember all the f***ing. Anwar had two wives, one in Glasgow and one in Motherwell, which his religion, Islam, permitted. It was his marital duty, he explained, to commit to and commute to both women. The excuse, along with the fact that he also needed his license to get to his restaurant business, was good enough for one Scottish sheriff, who leniently penalized him only 200 pounds and six penalty points. Number 8. The Ouija Defense The Gulf Breeze 6 sounds like some sort of rad surf collective. Surfers. Surfers. We wish that were the case. Instead, it's the nickname that was given to six military officers who abandoned their posts in Germany and traveled to Florida on a mission to kill the Antichrist. The power of Christ compels you! How did they know the Antichrist would be in Florida? Secret military channels? Of course not. They learned this tip-top intel from a spirit they conjured on a Ouija board. This is a joke. Come on, you guys, who's doing that? Strange as it sounds, that explanation was enough for these six to avoid a military court-martial. Instead, they received a discharge with full honors. But this was withdrawn and they were demoted to the lowest rank and lost some of their monthly salary. Vance Davis refuses to reveal any other information as to what physical evidence he came across in his top-secret post that would support his story of aliens and UFOs. Number 7. The Double D Defense you see, there's just you and one other woman that fit the physical description of the female suspect. One of the world's most ridiculous defenses comes from Tokyo. Model Serena Kozakura faced a 14-month prison sentence for property destruction after allegedly sneaking into a man's house and letting loose. So I violated Section 34 Double D? That's what you're telling me? However, her original guilty sentence was overturned after it was determined that her 44-inch bust was too large to squeeze through the hole she had to fit through to enter his apartment. It doesn't fit. To reach this decision, a recreation of the event occurred in a Tokyo high court, complete with Kozakura desperately trying to push her way through the hole. Like OJ's glove, if the boobs don't fit, you must acquit. It doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Number six, the PMS defense. Somebody wrote in that book that I'm lying about being a virgin because I use super jumbo tampons, but I can't help it if I've got a heavy flow and a wide set vagina. If you believe the stereotypes, things can get a little turbulent for women around that time of the month. For some, extreme and uncontrolled PMS-related turbulence has led to favorable outcomes in court. Are you PMS? Like 
1980s. Sandy Craddock had a slew of criminal charges, including first-degree murder, reduced because they were spread out at roughly 29-day intervals, in line with her menstrual cycle. Anna Reynolds, a teenager who murdered her mother, similarly used PMS as a mitigating factor to overturn her conviction. Oh my god, are you charting our menstrual cycles? Lunar cycles, which show people doing crazy things during a full moon, cannot do the trick. But menstrual cycles can. Are you PMSing or something? PMS isn't real, Needy. It was invented by the boy run media to make us seem crazy. Number 5. Automatism Automatism is a legal defense used to argue that a defendant was acting unconsciously and is thus not criminally responsible for what he or she did. For example, Jan Ludica was cleared of sexual assault because he suffered from sexomnia, which can be used as an automatism defense. More famous is the case of sleepwalker Kenneth Parks, however. In 1987, the still-asleep Parks allegedly drove to his in-law's house, murdered his mother-in-law, critically injured his father-in-law, and then quickly turned himself in. And he went over to someone who came to his assistance and said, I think I've just killed somebody. A 1992 Canadian Supreme Court ruling found Parks was not in control of his faculties at the time of the crime, due to sleepwalking. Several experts testified, proved reasonable doubt, and he was cleared of all charges. The kitchen knife must have slipped through his fingers and he cut the flexor tendons. He showed no pain, he felt no pain. And in the subsequent trial, that was very important evidence to indicate that he was not really with it. Number four, the gay trans panic defense. A gay high school senior, he got beaten up, then they stripped him naked, tied him to a tree, and threw rocks and bottles at his head. It's a little hard to believe this defense has been attempted so many times. Thankfully, for the good of humanity, it's not typically successful. The gay trans panic defense attempts to acquit or reduce charges by citing uncontrollable anger or fear when subjected to homosexual or transgender advances. The gay and transgender panic defenses did not appear until the late 1960s and rely on outdated ideas that homosexuality and gender nonconformity are mental diseases. Most judges laugh at this defense, though it was notably used by the defense attorneys in the 2002 murder of Gwen Araujo. Since the trial, California has passed the Gwen Araujo Justice for Victims Act, restricting the use of the gay trans panic defense. I am so sorry, Regina. Really, I, I don't know why I did it. I guess it's probably because I've got a big lesbian crush on you. Suck on that! Number three, the evil twin defense. Come and play with us, Daddy. Forever. Since the inception of the court system, lookalikes have been trying this defense. Perhaps we will too. It's seen mixed results, but our favorite success story occurred in 2009. <laughs> After facing drug trafficking charges in Malaysia, Sabarish and Satis Raj were brought to court to determine which of the identical twin brothers was guilty of possessing 365 pounds of cannabis and 3.7 pounds of opium. Because the arresting officers couldn't pinpoint which one had been caught with the drugs, and DNA tests wouldn't help because the brothers would be the same, the court was unable to determine which twin had committed the crime. Aren't they magnificent? They're men, Dwight. I love finding a good set of twins. So the judge ultimately let them go, rather than convict the wrong man and send him to death by hanging. We are getting aggravated. Yes, we are. Number two, affluenza. Wealth and prosperity is meant to be liberating, but the 2013 case of Ethan Couch argued it could also be a curse. After killing four people in a drunk driving accident, Couch successfully reduced his sentence from a maximum of 20 years in prison to a mere 10 years of probation. He didn't know boundaries because his rich parents didn't give him any. How? His defense team hired a psychologist that testified he suffered from affluenza, that is, being too privileged to understand the consequences of his idiotic actions. So ask your doctor if being rich is right for you. In 2015, the poor little rich boy was caught violating his probation when he fled to Mexico. No honorable mentions this time around. Oh, this is uncomfortable. Number one, the Twinkie defense. Society can't exist without the family. We're not against that. You're not? What, can two men reproduce? No. 
but God knows we keep trying. The creme de la creme of crazy defenses is a doozy, and a famous one at that. In 1979, Dan White, on trial for the murders of San Francisco Mayor George Moscone and openly homosexual supervisor Harvey Milk, had his sentence reduced from first-degree murder to voluntary manslaughter thanks to what the media called the Twinkie defense. Though it's often believed that his lawyers claimed that the consumption of Twinkies is what made White do what he did, the attorneys actually argued that the diet change from healthy to junk food was a symptom of his depression. This further caused his severe, uncontrollable mood swings, rendered him incapable of controlling his actions, also known as diminished capacity, and led to the murder. The reduced charges shocked the world, outraged the gay community, and led to the San Francisco White Knight riots. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the craziest legal defense? For more mind-blowing top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. One more word out of you, Mr. Reed. And I'll hold you in contempt. I hold myself in contempt! <laughs>